It is now time for the Voice of America's team. Every Monday at 8.40, it's Brad Sham joining us from the Meadowlands on the Diamond Factory Hotline here on Sean and RJ. I am guessing you're doing something better with your sightseeing time than Bobby Belt going to. And I love the Cheesecake Factory, but Bobby chose that as his New York, New Jersey restaurant of choice. What's your what's your tourist sort uh, your, your tourist sightseeing venue? Um, normally, it it might be one of a lot of things, but this is a uh, major religious observance day for me. So I didn't leave the hotel last night. I streamed religious services when we got here, and I will be doing that uh, later this morning. Oh wow, excellent! Uh, what are you seeing from the Giants in your homework for this game? Well, obviously Barkley. Um, he, he looks like he's been healthier than he's been in a couple of years. And, um, I, I like their, I like their defense. Uh, Leonard Williams is a grown man and he's probably not going to play, but they're going to have uh, Kevin Thibodeau, the fifth pick in the draft, I think for the first time. And, uh, Ojolari who led him in sacks, he'll be wearing 51, uh, led him in sacks last year and he's missed the first two games. So they should be pretty stout up front. And I like the aggressiveness of their secondary. They have they have some guys back there who the Cowboys have seen before, have been in the league for a while, guys like uh, uh, Love uh, at a safety and a Dory Jackson, who was a real high uh, second-round pick, I think, out of SC by Tennessee a few years ago. He seems to be playing real aggressively at corner. Um, and, you know, obviously the Cowboys' wide receivers have yet to – um, prove themselves to be fear inspiring. So I, I think that um, both teams are going to want to run the ball and, and the, and the front play of both teams is going to have a lot to say about how the passing games function. And I, so normally you would say, if you were inclined in this direction, this would be an absolute game to take the under, which probably means it'll be 35, 35. <laughs> What are you uh, thinking or hearing about the Cowboys injury situation with, with Gallup and Schultz and, and, and Micah's allergy attacks? I think Gallup's going to play. I, I, would, I don't know that he'll start, and I think they'll probably have him on a pitch count, I think. But I do think he's going to play. Schultz, I think it just depends on how he looked yesterday morning. You know, Saturday is is a practice day for them and so yesterday was saturday and uh we just really is going to have to depend on how he feels he seemed to have a good week i think they'll have four tight ends up because i think they'll elevate McEwen. parsons um parsons uh, i don't know exactly what that was um there were some whispers about what if he was playing in the national hockey league would have been a lower body injury Hmm. Um, it, it sounded like the worst allergy attack that was definitely not the <laughs> flu uh, in in the history of uh, antihistamines. But um, I, I was told by someone, I believe, that he'll uh, he'll play, and uh, he probably won't show any effect of whatever it is that he had or didn't have or did or didn't do. But uh, that that whole thing was odd. It was just odd. How do you feel about the Micah Lawrence Taylor talk? It's still premature because Taylor became Taylor after, um, well, in the midst of a long run. And Micah's still, you know, a season and two games in. He's obviously a different guy sure now i I don't think we'll see him line up at end tonight because that doesn't really make any sense to play him there all the time when the chief threat is uh, the running back so you you know you might have one lion running down another lion tonight uh Hmm. that seems to be on paper the best way to use him and so the difference between him and taylor as dan quinn said last year um you know lawrence taylor was the right outside linebacker in a 3-4, and you knew where he was. You couldn't stop him, but you knew where he was. And uh, the the beauty of how Quinn has figured out how to use Micah is that he comes from everywhere, and sometimes he's a linebacker. I mean, they had, they had times last week where um, 
they actually had like an eye formation in the middle of the defensive line. They had uh, they had Osa lined up on the nose of the center, and Parsons lined up directly behind him. So there was no way pre-snap to tell who was going to do what because uh, Odegizua could drop back in his own blitz. You never know. And that kind of thing is what Quinn, one of one of the many things I think Quinn's really good at, and I think that because Parsons has such unusual speed and range, um, you know, RJ and I have had this conversation before, but I think that his skill set is – so unusually good that you like make him play with one hand tied behind his back if you limit him to being a down end and rushing the passer. So I, I think that you have to give him a little more time to play. Now, if he keeps r- getting sacks, I hate just using statistics mm-hmm. to measure positions like this, but if he keeps getting sacks at this rate, then he's going to be. You know, he's certainly in that conversation. He's in the conversation now. It's just so early for him, right? Uh, you know, because you know, in, in, you mentioned the moving around and the, and the versatility. Um, and and uh, you're right. I mean, he is he is the best pass rusher, I think, in the league. From no matter where he's coming from, I just want him rushing the passer. But I don't know. Obviously, you weren't able to hear this. Romo was talking about this last week, where he said, you know, the one thing about Micah when you, when he's rushing from the A from the A gap is that you know you know. When he he's not going to be dropped back into coverage as the quarterback, so you can kind of you you can kind of kind of figure out that way where the other guys are going to be dropping back from. Is there anything to that you think? Well, that's great. Depending on the play that's called, I mean, I I think Romo comes at it from the point of view of a quarterback who had the freedom to change plays a lot, and uh, and I think that's that's one of the things about an offense that we don't know. When the quarterback change, hey, why'd they throw? Why did they run? They don't call it. Well, you don't know how many runs they called the quarterback change, especially when, you know, Tony had just a tremendous amount of freedom to yeah. change stuff. So that is, that's a, that is a, certainly a pertinent observation for a quarterback to make, but it depends on the play that's called. So you can say, okay, I see him in the A gap and, and we've got uh, an off tackle run called. I'm going to stay with that. And then who's to say that he doesn't take two steps and get out to the C and D gap where the back now is faster than anybody else can. That, that's, that, I, I understand what Romo is saying, but, but the guy's uh, Parsons skill set is, is such that it kind of changes a lot of those equations for me. Brad Sham will have the call tonight, Monday Night Football, with Babe Laufenberg joining us here on Sean and RJ. What do you think of the Manning cast? You know, I I, I watched it last year um, some. Uh, the thing about, look, I like watching the game. Now, if the game wasn't any good or particularly compelling, then they were they were absolutely more entertaining. Um, and I, I I didn't think there was anything compelling about the. Um, the crew that ESPN had working the last couple of years. But there were times that those guys just kind of got off into their own thing or they would cater to their guests yeah. and they forgot about the game. And I want to watch the game. Now, with with Troy and Joe doing it, I'm much more interested in watching the game with them. And I, I can't imagine that I would pay much attention to the Manning cast under these circumstances. Who is your favorite? Well, I understand, but it's like it, it's like you know, chocolate and vanilla, Sean. It's not it, the same thing's not for everybody. I understand why people like it. It can be entertaining. Who's your favorite current uh, NFL play-by-play voice and favorite analyst? Um, you know, I think Joe and Troy. Okay. I think Joe and Troy. I like. Uh, I'm a big Charles Davis fan, but I also know him personally, and. Wow. Uh, um, he, I think I've worked with him and he, he, I think he really does a great job. Um, now can I answer that with somebody at the other end of the spectrum? Sure. Mm-hmm. Mark Schlereth was, was a really outstanding player and I respect his ability to analyze a game. I want someone at Fox to tell him that, um, 
there's no need for him to say the name of his sport every time. <laughs> you don't have to say he's looking at the football field. He's got a great read down the football field. We don't think it's a soccer pitch. <laughs> we don't know what it is. He had, the he had Eagles commanders, right? Uh, and I heard it yesterday, but I've heard him do it a lot. Yeah. I've heard him, you know, if I'm taping a game, if the Cowboys are playing somebody who's who's in that. And so when I go back tomorrow and start watching that tape, right. I'll, I'll hear it a lot. And I'll guarantee you, he'll say it four or five yeah. times a quarter. Yeah. I mean, he's look at, he got a great look at the football field. <laughs> yes. And if you look, you can see Russia from your backyard. Come on. <laughs> I know it's a football field. <laughs>